Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric, and there are a lot of twin stick shooters on the Nintendo Switch. So many. I've covered so many throughout the months, and it's like, when will they ever stop? I don't know. Turn off the lights, and I'll glow. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, live stage, and wax a chump like a candle. Okay, I'm gonna stop trying because today we're gonna talk about another twin stick shooter called Blazing Beaks. This one takes place in a universe where ducks can walk and shoot guns. If that was really gonna happen in today's universe, oh, we'd be screwed. So yeah, it's a twin stick shooter with ducks, birds, penguins, platypuses, toucan sams that wield guns and have to shoot all sorts of different evil like monsters and creatures and demons and stuff. It's it's actually kind of chaotic. So yeah, we're gonna talk about blazing beaks and see if it's any good and worth picking up for your nintendo switch so guys if you're brand new feel free to throw a subscription and let's go ahead and begin today's video So guys, Blazing Beaks, as I mentioned, is a twin stick shooter. In case you don't know what that means, it means you control the character with one stick and you aim with the other and you use the ZR trigger to shoot. I mean, they you've played one, you've played them all, basically. And, and the idea here is to survive as long as possible. It is a roguelike, like a lot of other twin stick shooters. So the idea is you choose your character and you avoid all the enemies on screen. There's also traps like spikes and different things things of that nature some of the enemies lay ooze toxic ooze and bombs and things of that nature and the idea is to eliminate all the enemies that are on whatever particular screen you are and then proceed once in a while you'll find doorways that go to item shops or secret areas and unlockable doors and stuff and the idea is to gather artifacts and different items and stuff exchange them at the shop for more powerful items or you can buy new machinery and weapons and things of that nature and upgrade yourself so you can survive longer and then when you're ready you tackle on the boss and these boss fights are just like other roguelikes pretty tricky you know they're not too bad or whatever but i do like the art style of this game and the presentation you know most twin stick shooters really take themselves seriously they have like a futuristic apocalyptic type of thing but this one's like chickens and stuff so i really liked the comedic style behind this it does feature like a 16-bit retro looking aesthetic and stuff and it's it's a game that doesn't take itself too serious but the gameplay is definitely challenging it's up there and it has a fair amount of difficulty and it has that oh man i died you know let me try one more shot factor that applies to a lot of roguelikes because just like other ones once you die you have to basically start over from scratch there's no save points no continuing where you're at all progress is negated you start over from the beginning of the game and you have to go all the way from the ground up so it does have a lot of replayability there's a lot of unlockables different weapons and stuff you can unlock different characters and each character has their own tributes and different types of gameplay styles and stuff so it's a lot of fun and uh yeah so let's go ahead and give it a little look-see uh, i'm gonna play some of the single player campaign for you guys just to give you a little flavor okay guys so this is blazing beaks now it is a twin stick shooter. You use the right stick, of course, to aim ZR to uh, shoot, just like any other standard um, twin stick shooter. Now you, your goal is to clear the screen of all the enemies. You can see, um, boom, and then you can proceed. Now every every area is procedurally generated. It's random, just like a lot of other roguelikes that are out there. You never really play the same game twice. There's stage hazards like that ooze, that toxic ooze that they spit up after you kill them. There's bombs, there's spikes. Um, you know, everything that could hurt you can also hurt the enemies though. So there is a little bit of strategy involved with uh, tricking them to hurt each other. And the idea is to just get as many items and stuff that you can take to the shop to uh, basically upgrade your character. You can upgrade your character to be better prepared for the boss fights. Um, eventually the rooms do have multiple openings, like right here. If I had a key, I can unlock this door, but I can't, so I have to go forward. I do like the presentation, as I mentioned. The idea with birds is interesting. 
like, uh, no idea why they chose to do that, but you know what? It's different. <laughs> Something that could definitely separate itself from the pack. Um, now, see, this room has three openings. The left open goes to the shop. The right one goes to a different part of the area, and the middle one actually goes to the boss of this area. So let's go to the shop, just so I can show you guys an example of how it works. Now, if I have any artifacts, I trade them in right here, like so, and he gives me some items that can upgrade my shooting and everything like that. And if I had enough money, I could get a random weapon, a small purple blaster, or a nail gun. So you can do weapon upgrades there. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Every so often, you're able to encounter a shop. Now let's keep going. You know, hopefully I could uh, stay alive long enough to uh, show you guys the boss fight. There's a coin right there. Where was the coin when I needed it earlier? So I could have gotten me a better weapon. Alright, so here we go. And yeah, the enemies can kill each other. See? You can see that explosion from that egg. Oh, look. I got a, a key. The explosions can kill each other. The spikes on the ground that you see right here can kill the bad guys as well. I'm missing. So, yeah, a big part of the strategy is to to use your environment to your advantage. So I guess no choice but to go to the boss. Let's see if I can kill him. So this is Newt, and I'm not talking about Newt, um, Fig Newtons. <laughs> so yeah, the idea is to wait for him to give you the cue that he's gonna stick his tongue out, get stuck to the post, and just go nuts out like that. Um, he has two attacks basically. He throws those guys out of his mouth and the other one is he attacks, but you gotta watch out for those spikes. You only have a limited amount of time to cross over. So the idea is to kind of just give it a little, give it a little split second before he shoves the tongue out so you can, uh, so you can do this. And it's not too bad. So, the boss fights, as you progress, do get pretty intense. This one, he ain't too bad. If you played a retro-style game, you should, for the most part, know how to do it. Here we go. Just a little bit more, guys. Gotta be careful, the enemies can still attack you while you are picking up your items. So just, just be a little a little cautious, throw caution. Got a royalty card. I'm gonna do the iron wings. Alright, so now it's the graveyard time. You gotta watch out for these big red guys. Enemies do get a little bit tougher. Those red guys charge at you, actually. And these guys, they pack a wallop. Oh, shit. All right, Dabber, you guys get the general idea. Let's go ahead and move to conclusion. Uh, conclusion thoughts. Even a turn. So yeah, that was just to give you guys a little flavor. Again, it is a twin stick shooter. There are additional modes. There's a tournament mode where up to four people can play different tile style of. Uh, so just to give you guys a little flavor of the story mode, in addition to that, there's also multiplayer capabilities. You can play with up to four people. There's a tournament mode that features stuff like death matches and things like that. So there's a fair amount of content here for, you know, beyond the story mode. You know, it, it's actually pretty neat. The game is $14.99 in the eShop, so it's not too bad on the price. I think it is actually a perfect price for what you get here. It's a lot of fun. Again, you can play local couch co-op with your friends, at up to four people. It's a zany party game. I think it has fun written all over it. So I will give it on the 8-bit air game grading scale a solid 8 
with its presentation, it's easy to pick up and play, and its content. So I do think it is definitely worth a look. And guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, dislike. Have a great day. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description.